Turn to Matthew chapter number 28. Matthew chapter number 28. If you're there, say amen. amen. Now, what I want you to do, we're going to move from Matthew 28, then we're going to move to Acts chapter 2, and then ultimately I'm going to end up in 1 Corinthians 10 and 11. You just follow me as I take step by step in the Word of God. I am glad for the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is the power of God unto salvation. If you're here tonight and never been saved and don't know you're saved, Jesus Christ died upon the cross of Calvary to save your sin and save you from your sin. And he rose the third day. Amen. And that is the good news, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And as they were singing just a moment ago about proclaiming that good news, about giving that good news, praise God, that's what we're here for. Turn to Matthew chapter 28. After the resurrection, well, I want to start at verse number 16, take you in context, and I'll teach a few verses here, then I'll go over in Acts and teach a few, and then get you where I want you tonight as we're preparing ourselves for tomorrow night and for the Lord's Supper and what God's doing. And by the way, God has two ordinances for the church. Somebody help me preach. And that is baptism and the Lord's Supper. And you're going to find out tonight you can't be, uh, you can't have the Lord's Supper until you're baptized. And you can't be baptized until you're saved. Amen. Am I preaching? Don't, don't get the cart before the horse and don't get them backwards because you get them backwards, you may lose your soul in hell. So, because baptism doesn't save you. Good works doesn't save you. Even church membership doesn't save you. But it's the first, baptism's the first step after you get saved. Amen. Let me, let, whew. Then the, look at verse number 16. Just follow me tonight. I'll help you tonight. I'll teach you some things. Then the 11 disciples went away into Galilee into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they, had, when they saw him, they worshiped him. But some doubted. Boy, ain't we like that. It's not changed much. And Jesus came and spake unto them. Now listen to this. If you have any questions about his authority and his power, this ought to settle right here. All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Ladies and gentlemen, God's got power to save anybody in this room. God's got power to keep you saved. Uh, God's got power to supply any need. God's got power to heal your body. God's got power to deliver you from Satan. God's got power to give you victory in this Christian life. Somebody help me preach. Thank God for the power of God and the power of the gospel. Now notice in verse 19, it gives the church the great commission. We know that the church is built upon the testimony of the 12 disciples said, go ye therefore and teach all nations. What are we supposed to teach you? We need to teach people how to be saved. That is the gospel. That's why we got a track rack back there. We ought to get get those tracks and pass them out because we got to teach people how to be saved. Why do we have to teach people how to be saved? Because sinners are blind. Sinners are dead in sin. Sinners away from God. They need somebody to teach them, and the only way you can is through the preaching and the teaching of the gospel of Christ. And if you're here tonight, lost, give it. Listen to me carefully. The gospel is the death, burial, and resurrection. That's what we teach people. How many glad you were taught that? How many glad you received that? How many glad you know you're saved tonight? I'm saved by that gospel. Now notice this. Once somebody gets saved, what do you do? After you teach them, they're saved. You baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Ghost. That's the Trinity. Three in one. I thank God, God the Father planned our salvation. God the Son bought our salvation. God the Holy Spirit brought our salvation. 
And when he revealed it to me, I caught my salvation. And the devil fights me every day. But thank God I'm saved tonight. Whew, glory. Then look what it says. After you get them saved, you get them baptized, then you teach them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you. That's the great commission. And what is it we're supposed to teach people? We need to teach them the gospel. We need to teach them that after they're saved, they follow up and be, uh, be baptized. Then we need to teach them to observe the Lord's Supper and take part of the Lord's Supper. And those are the two ordinances of the church. Somebody say amen. amen. Now let me show you some more. Turn to Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. I, I, I'm just showing you in the Word of God. Tonight we have four more to be baptized. We baptized this morning. That's, that's what God wants. Amen. Let me show you too in Acts chapter 2 and verse 41. Peter was on the day of Pentecost. And I want you to know on the day of Pentecost, Peter preached and their hearts were pricked. And you know what he preached? He preached against sin. If you're here tonight and lost, you're in sin. You're dead in sin. You're blinded by sin. And your need tonight is to be saved and transformed from darkness unto light. Amen. And he preached against their sin. The Bible said the hearts were pricked. Now, I'm going to stop a moment. You know what's missing our churches today? It's real hard preaching on sin. Amen. And I'll tell you what else is missing. It's real hard preaching about repentance. You got to repent of your sin if you're going to be saved. You got to trust Christ. You got to repent. You got to turn from your sin and turn to Christ and, and become a new creature. Now, notice, well, glory. Peter preached the word of God. Now, notice the result in verse 41. Oh, I like this. Then they that gladly, what? Receive the word. <laughs> the Bible said to many as received him, they gave him power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe his name. I want you to know something. You, faith cometh by hearing. How many believe that tonight? You've got to know that you're a sinner. You've got to know that you're lost. You ought to know you're on your way to hell. You ought to know that there's no hope for you. But the gospel of Christ is your hope tonight. And faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Well, glory. Then it says, and they, <laughs> and then they that gladly received the word were baptized. Amen. Now, when you get baptized, when you receive Christ, when you receive the word, you don't get baptized before forehand. Somebody help me preach. Yeah. Baptism doesn't save you. These children are going to be baptized tonight. That's not going to save them. They've been saved up in the club up there. The young lady that got baptized this morning, that didn't save her. She's, she followed up in believer's baptism. Somebody said, help, help me preach here. Amen. Amen. Now notice this. They started with 120 in the upper room. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. And the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Could you imagine 3,000 people being saved in one day? I say to you, that's the example of the power of the gospel. 3,000 saved at one time. I get real excited when two or three are saved. I get excited when one saved in this dark world. But thank God he still saves. If you're here tonight lost, he'll save you from your sin. I don't know if I'm going to get where I want to be tonight. I'm just, I'm just preaching now hard. Look at it. Stay with me. Now, notice, notice, I'm going to give you this. I'll teach you something. Notice when they were added to the 120, when they were baptized. Baptism is a door, not into heaven, but into the local church. It's your first step after you become a believer. You're baptized, and then you unite with a local uh, New Testament church and follow the ordinances of Christ. That's what God wants you to do. Am I preaching? Now notice, 
Notice what they continued to do. I want you to see this so you'll, so you'll see it. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship. Now notice, and in breaking of bread and in prayer. What do we do after we're saved? Look at me. You, you get the gospel, you get saved. After you're saved, am I preaching? You bapt, get baptized. After you're baptized, you, you fellowship with the believers. And here's how we fellowship. We're going to do it tomorrow night. It's a command of God. And tonight, every one of us in this room, everyone listening live stream that's not here tonight in this service, and you're a member of Taste Valley Baptist Church, you're a part of this family, you need to come and get back. You, you need to come and cum communion tomorrow night, and you need to do it because that's the Word of God. Am I preaching? Amen, Amen. Now turn, finally turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter number 10 and chapter number 11. I'll conclude. Now tomorrow night, this church, this church family is going to do the most holy, the most wonderful service that you can do. And that is partake of the Lord's Supper. It's the greatest privilege of all. And here's what I want to preach on tonight. Why we observe the Lord's Supper. Why do believers who being saved by the grace of God observe the Lord's Supper? Let me give you a few reasons and I'm just going to give you bullet points. All right, look at 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse number 16. When you're there, say amen. amen. Look what he says. The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? Ladies and gentlemen, when you partake of the Lord's Supper, here's what you're doing, first of all. You're saying thank you for dying upon the cross of Calvary. The blood is blessed. That is the fruit of the vine. Tomorrow night we'll give juice out, and that's the fruit of the vine. Remember, see this? It's magnifying the blood, the blood before the bread, but we know his body was broken first, and then he shed his blood. I want you to know something. We can thank God in our testimony. We can thank God at our home. But one of the most precious, wonderful services we have here at Tate Valley Baptist Church is when you sit in this auditorium and you have that bread in your hand, which is the broken body, where his body was broken on Calvary, where he was crucified, and he, and he had every flesh wound common to man, and he died and bled. By the way, he died and bled for every one of us. You have, in the room, if you're a sinner tonight, he died for you. Amen. His body was broken for you. Yeah. His blood was shed for you. Yeah. And when we do this, we're doing it. We're saying thank you. Yes. We're saying thank you. Yes. And there's a lot of believers, and I'm not trying to shame nobody, but there's a lot of believers. Take this too lightly. Right. It's a command. Right. It's what he wants us to do. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Number two. Number two. Y'all still with me? I'm going somewhere. Look at verse 16 again. This cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the, the blood of Christ? This is the bread which we break. Is it not the communion of the body of Christ? I'll tell you the second thing it does. It brings fellowship to the Christian. We're fellowshipping around the broken bread and the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know there's a lot of churches that think the only way you can have fellowship is to go up and have a chicken plate. Hello. 
No, I tell you, the most sacred, wonderful fellowship, when the believers get together and partake of the Lord's Supper, there ain't nothing closer. There's not a bond closer. Could you imagine the Lord the night when he was going to be crucified, took his disciples alone, and ladies and gentlemen, what a fellowship, what a bond, what a one. Man, I've had some of the greatest blessings of my life in the service of the Lord's Supper. Somebody help me preach. I'm getting up pretty quick, ain't <laughs> Hallelujah. Turn over to the 11th chapter. I'm almost done. I'm winding now. Turn to the 11th chapter of 1 Corinthians. Now go to verse 25. I really want you to see this. 11, 25, when you're in there, say Amen. 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 I mentioned a moment ago that the Lord's Supper is a command, and us partaking of it is obedience to that command. Look at verse number 25. After the same manner, also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, this is my, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. He, he said, hey, when you do this, you're remembering me. Uh, you're being obedient to my command. You're being obedient to what the, 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 what follows the gospel and salvation. You're being obedient. First step of obedience is being baptized. Second step of obedience is following the Lord's Supper and being a member of a local church and be a part of the fellowship. Somebody help me preach. Hey, that's the first step of obedience. And sometimes we take it so lightly. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. But I tell you, it must have been pretty important for it to be mentioned in chapter 10 and chapter 11, mentioned in Matthew, mentioned in Acts. It must have been pretty important. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Right. Amen. Yeah. Now listen, verse 25 again. Verse 4. Fourth thing. It's the remembrance of concerning God's Christ. I'll tell you one thing. How many of you agree that sometimes we're pretty forgetful people? You remember the butler that forgot Joseph? And in Acts, or in Ecclesiastes 9, 6, remember the man that delivered the city was forgotten? I want you to know something. It was Jesus that delivered your soul from hell. It was Jesus that saved us to the uttermost. It was Jesus that loved us to the end. It was Jesus that died on the cross. It was Jesus that came from the grave. He is our deliverer, and we need to remember his, remember what he done and his deliverance. I'm glad I'm saved. Are you glad you're saved? Well, glory. <laughs> Oh, he who was rich became poor, that we that are poor can become rich. <laughs> Remember that statement in Ecclesiastes, that poor wise man that delivered the city. I want you, I want you to know the richest God sent his son who became poor, who became sin, who bore our sin, that died on the cross of Calvary, that shed his blood. Doesn't that mean anything to us anymore? That's what, why we're going to heaven. That's why we know Christ. That's why we're sealed to the day of redemption. That's why heaven is our home. Hallelujah. I'll tell you what. We're coming up on Thursday. And we're going to eat, and we're going to enjoy each other, and we're going to fellowship, and we're going to have a time. And we're going to remember how good God's been. But tomorrow night, we're going to remember what Christ done. Hallelujah. 11.26, I'm almost done. It's a proclamation about the crucifixion. Look at 11, 26. If you're there, say amen. amen. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death 
till he comes. What's a proclamation? You do show your testimony. When we take that communion tomorrow night and we take that broken bread, that's significant of his broken body, and we drink that, that juice, that, that new wine, when we drink that tomorrow night, that's representative of his blood. And what we are doing when we do that, we are proclaiming that Jesus saves. We are proclaiming the crucifixion of Christ is sufficient and the death, burial, and resurrection he is the way to heaven. And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Hallelujah. We all right? <laughs> you said, I didn't know I'd do that. Do you know every time we take the Lord's Supper, we're showing the crucifixion? We're proclaiming his death, his burial, his resurrection. How many believe that and you got saved? Raise your hand high if you know you're saved. Raise them high if you know you're saved. You believe that? You believe he died, was buried, and rose again? That's the way to get saved tonight. If you're here lost, that's the way to be saved tonight. <laughs> well, glory. Glory to God. Well, if you're not going to say it, I'm going to say it. Preach on, buddy. Oh, but there's something else that's even better. I am about ready to lose my mule right here and get happy. It does proclaim the crucifixion, but it really does something even greater than that. Look at verse 26. It's an expectation of Jesus Christ coming again. <laughs> The Bible says this. Boy, get with me here. I'm all I'm close. We're getting these kids ready to be baptized. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death. Listen. Listen. Till he comes. I gotta stand again. He's coming. You, you listen to me tonight. If you're here lost, he's coming. Look at the world's circumstance and look how gloomy the world is. All, everything you're seeing is fulfilling prophecy. And all he's, I, I believe the trumpeter is getting ready to uh, lick his lips and, and just waiting for the Father's command for the Son to come out of heaven and the dead in Christ will rise first. And we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Oh, so with that way we can comfort each other with these words. Somebody, hey, he's coming. I want to ask you, are you ready? Yeah. Yeah. I say even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Yeah. I believe Hyman Appleman was at Grace Baptist Temple several years ago, wasn't he? And you know what he said up to your church? I, mean, I don't know if you remember it, but I'll re remind you because I got an excerpt from it, heard about it. I'm an Appleman, the great preacher of been Grace, right in St. Albans. Here's what he said. See, one of these days, we're going to drink it new in the kingdom. And Dr. Appleman made this statement. They won't say grace until I get there. <laughs> One, man, my heart's beating. I'm not ready to shout it out. One of, the, one of these days, he's coming back. We're going to be judged at the judgment seat. We're going to then be married to the Lamb. Somebody help me preach. And then we are all. He said, I don't know how that's going to be an awful big table. You leave that up to God. How many believe God big enough to do anything? Amen. Then we're all the body of Christ, the church of the living God. You know what we're going to do? Together. 
with Christ's presence, yes. drink it new in the yes. kingdom of God. Yes. I, I, don't, I don't know if y'all got that or not. I, I, don't, I, I, I think that went over your head. Look at me. You are, if you're saved and you're born again and you're blood washed and you're a child of God, we'll take our last communion here and then we'll take our first communion in heaven. <laughs> I'm about to get beside myself. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But let me ask you this. He said, go ye in all the world and preach the gospel. See, the last thing the Lord's communion shows, it's an examination of our conduct. I tell you what, I'm going to take the Lord's Supper tomorrow night. I want to be right with God. Somebody say Amen. I don't want to only be right with God. I want to be right with my neighbor. Right, right. I want to have the right attitude. Amen. Hey, we need to examine ourselves. Somebody help me preach right there. Amen. Now, let me ask you a question. The gospel is the death, burial, and resurrection. The gospel is what Christ done for you. If you're in this room tonight and you're not saved, you need to get saved. Bow your head with me. Heads bowed, eyes closed. We want you to stand if you would. Heads bowed, eyes closed. I wonder how many knows that you know that you know you're saved. Raise your hand. How many in here is not saved, but you would like to be saved and you want to know Christ and you do believe the death, burial, and resurrection and you do believe he died for you and you know he shed his blood for you. If you're in this room lost, will you slip your hand up and say, pray for me. I'm not a Christian, but I need to be. I, I need to be. I, I need to believe that gospel. We're going to sing. We're going to get ready to baptize and we're going to sing right now. Let me pray. Our Father. Thank you for your goodness toward us tonight. Lord, this is a great evening. We just preached about what you commissioned us to do. First, take the gospel to every creature. Secondly, our converts baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And then thirdly, teach them to observe the Lord's Supper and the communion table and how sacred it is and how wonderful it is until you come. But I want to say my prayer tonight, Lord. Even so, Lord Jesus, come quickly. Oh, Lord Jesus, i like to see you come. Been a lot of our folks went home to be with the Lord recently. And Lord, I can't wait to see them. I can't wait for that rapture when the dead in Christ rise first. And we which are alive remain, be caught up together in the air. And so shall we ever be floored. What a wonderful day that'll be. You bless now. In Jesus' name and for his sake.